So what I'm going to do now here is uh, I'm going to try to pick a topic that we're, I'm accelerating the process about finding that hyper user or the extreme user, right? So, so let's, my question I'm going to ask is like, how many people here order takeout twice a week? So Asmini, yes. why don't you come up here and you'll, you'll be our victim. Oh no. No, I'm kidding. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is um, grab a pad and grab a pen. Okay. So if you think of like FedEx or Perlator as the express version, this is like the teleportation express version of, of, of design thinking. So we're going to try to even kind of go a little further. So Jamini, thank you for being a good sport. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I, I am two people, both person asking the person and taking the notes. So I'm going to ask these questions, and I probably should have spent a little more time refining them and other, but I, wasn't, I had a couple backup topics of which topic I should use instead of the takeout food one. So I spent less, more time trying to figure out a topic than I did actually doing the questions. But I'm going to ask a couple questions. So you guys, what you guys are going to do is you're going to be as if you were one of the two people that were in the user interview. And then you're going to write down, you're going to write down some notes, OK? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a couple of you guys to ex uh, talk and try to group share what you thought as if you were the second person there. And then we'll take that and we'll do some of the, uh, the, the, the grouping and stuff like that. This is the point where I would, I'm speeding through, fast forwarding through the tape, where I would say, you know, this is the company, this is what we do, blah, 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 I'm not trying to hurt you, it's all safe, <laughs> I have ethical responsibility, that kind of thing, right? So remember we talked about a usability testing? So we're gonna get right down to the questions. Okay, basically if you can kind of see it, I have a couple of questions that I've come to put down. A lot of it is a little bit dynamic. I've milded down the questions to what couple things I wanted to focus on, but I'm gonna let serendipity take a little place and I'm gonna do some, uh, Ad living depending on where it wants. So it's not so cut and dry as reusability testing. So if you want later on, you can ask me what I've written down in the paper, but that's not necessarily what's going to, it, it, you can see the difference. I will have been using a script. I I've used the script for that usability testing, but for here, I kind of have some questions that are sort of the guide, but I'm looking for that curve. How many times a week do you order takeout? I would say once a week. Okay, so you would say that you're a pretty big takeout user? No, once a week. Okay. So, when was the last time you had takeout? Saturday. Okay, so why did you opt for takeout instead of cooking at home or eating in? I was out already and it just made sense to grab something. The takeout that you got, it would it have been something that you would have considered cooking at home? No. Okay, yeah, so maybe I should have been a little clearer. So, like for some people who have very good didactic memory or something like that. You can record everything mentally in your brain. So you guys are would be doing the observing part of the empathy and the design thinking. So really, you're kind of trying to have some notes that will help you later on when we do more discussions. Can you briefly explain the takeout process that you when your last in your, during your last takeout? Walk me through the process. Okay, um, I was already out shopping, mm -hmm. and then there was this restaurant that I'd heard about. Okay. So I went in and. Um, I didn't actually know too much about the items in the menu, so my boyfriend had to decide what to get. And then it was all new things, so I wanted to try something new. And you took the food home and ate it at home? Yeah. Okay. So did you have any sort of feelings about the service that you got or the takeout process? So how would it compare to other times you've had takeout at other places? So you said one of the good things was the fact that the food came fairly quickly? Yes. So you don't like waiting a long time? Absolutely not. So another thing you said that you were willing to take a little bit of serendipity in the process or let your boyfriend choose some of the items because yeah. you didn't really know. Mm -hmm. So is that a concern uh, about you, about knowing exactly what is on the menu description-wise? If he wasn't around, I would like to know. I would okay. like pictures and know what I'm getting. Okay. Would you want to sample the food that you were ordering? How was the food packaged f for when you went home? You don't want to have to reheat your food when you go home. It's nice not having to, but I think a main, main concern would be making sure that nothing spills on the cup. Okay. So w what type of food was it ethnically? Um, it was Indian food. Yeah. Did you find that it was an appropriate value, uh, appropriate price that they charged? Was it high? Was it low? No, it was a good price. It was a good deal. It was okay. Does price involve, have any part of the decision when you go out to a, a takeout restaurant? Yeah. And would you go to a takeout restaurant? Like, how do you select them? Do you look for reviews or? Uh, you mean the restaurant? Oh, yeah, yes, or the restaurant. Um, yeah, reviews play a big part, or just word of mouth, and then just, yeah. 
And so you said that you knew that you wanted to go to this restaurant. I've heard a lot about it, yes. And where did you hear about it from? Uh, friends. OK. And they gave? Good reviews. And they said the food tasted good, or yeah. did they tell you to order something specific? They didn't say anything specific. They just said the food was good. We're fast forwarding through here. So in this case, you, you would kind of have been one of the type of people. I'm going to cheat a bit, because say there, each one of you would have gone into pairs into different type of people. And she probably wouldn't have been the only person that we're going to interview. But for the time's sake that we're, we're, gonna have, uh, we're kind of running a little tight on time, I was hoping to interview a couple more people. But we'll just kind of go on that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the brainstorming session. So um, we had a couple rules, and I'll just kind of quickly verbalize them again. If I've learned anything from sort of experience, uh, I, I'll tell you that the first time you kind of do this, you kind of feel awkward. And then now, like, our group is so tuned that we're the, let's brainstorm this. And Bang, it happens like so fast. Let's write down all the things we can, insights we can take about, about, Ashwini, Ashwini, about what she said about her takeout process, right? What, what are type of things that come to mind, right? Uh, obviously she said, you know, price plays an important effect, right? Uh, having her food not leak or something like that. What I want is atomic units of insight, one per page, so that we can move them around. So don't put them all on one. The rule number three for brainstorm is headline. So I don't want, she really doesn't like it spilling in the back seat of her trunk, and so the bottom base would have to be larger. I want headlines, like not, not spill, right? Sometimes it doesn't have to be full English, right? Yeah. LOL, right? <laughs> Encourage wild ideas. You got wild ideas, go for it. Be visual. So I've seen some people who love doing words and then drawing a little picture, icons or something like kind of that. The idea is stay on plot for judgment. So those are kind of other rules that what we're going to do afterwards, so before you start writing, what we do is for five minutes, you guys come up with as many, and then usually what we do is I stick them on my leg, have them on my body, like around, right? Depends on how many you kind of come up with. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around popcorn at one at a time, and people will take their idea, they put it on the wall, or I'll ask them, you know, give me their idea, and I'll put it on the wall, and then if they want to say their idea and add any two cents, kind of worth a bit. And then what we're gonna see is hopefully we'll, we'll keep going around until we run out of people have everyone done, and then we're going to do some grouping on that. Go for it. I'll give you guys uh, three minutes. So Josh, give me one that's unique. Word of mouth important. Word of mouth important. So anybody have like a referral-ish? Advocacy. There's an image. Art. Good, friend, good reviews from friends and websites. Word of mouth important. Okay. Usually, you're going to get one of these things where, unfortunately, the 2, 2D-ness of the board is limiting, right? So as a facility, you sort of have to make some decisions. And what happens is, sometimes serendipity takes place. And you hear me saying that a lot. And maybe I put convenience down there, and it should have been location. But somebody looks at that, and they build on that idea. And they say, hey, you know what? That's it, right? So while we're doing this, did anybody kind of come up with additional ideas based off of seeing stuff on the board. So what I didn't kind of tell you is that what, what we generally do is we do this run around, but we don't have time on it. That, you know, when somebody says something on the board, you're perfectly free to willing to write it down and add it to the list so that cue can kind of sort of grow, right? And so we, that's where the idea of building on the idea of others. That what I'm going to do is I'll do a little bit of grouping. So what happens is, in this case, I've done sort of the dynamic grouping. I don't know if you picked it up on top of that. I do this quite often, this, these type of things. And, and, and you know, Deborah had some answers about, you know, like, where, why did I kind of group that or not? For sure, some of the facilitators bias kind of puts into this, but I've kind of been doing this enough that I know kind of like where, so the first time you might kind of might struggle, and you might want to just put them all on the board, and then you would kind of group them afterwards. I'll quickly do this so that we get to the composite, but the idea is like, um, I'm going to skip over the empathy map, but I'm going to do things like, obviously, like, you know, I wouldn't I don't always do this on a whiteboard, so sometimes we don't actually draw this out. But like, for example, I would say, uh, I, I'm going to move that. But that's something like here. This is the adventurous part, right? So you know, we'll call it, you know, we might say that's new. Um, I might, and another day, I might draw this and say, new and then I might add in discoverability, right? So okay, well new. Well, it has to be discoverable how it can be new, right? So there's reviews, right? So obviously this is this is good food ratings, right? I I could say, okay, well I'm gonna do something like that. So really I'm just trying to help you kind of come through. So like for example I'll call this sampling. Right? 
we'll call this ratings. Every time you do this, it's going to be slightly different. But what we're doing was just, so you know, she wants it warm. Sorry, that kind of goes in here. I'm going to now group packaging. What I've done is I've moved in the heat as well as the spilling together into packaging. We'll give each of you guys a chance to come up and have. I don't have any. Usually we have loading dots, but I forgot to bring them today. So we'll give you guys each a, a marker, and you can put a little dot, only three dots, but besides any one of the group. And then what we'll do is we'll do some voting. But before then, I want to give you some uh, more information. I find it helpful that I try to spread out the colors as much as possible. I'll even do tricks like where I will change the Sharpie color so that they'll be unique so I can trace it back to who I do it. Some other people don't go to that level, but I, sometimes I have follow-up questions when I'm facilitating. It's much easier to do that. So that's another helpful hint. But what I would do when I statistically analyze some of the brainstorming sessions is I'll say, like for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, I say this is an eight. These are the no number of eight times. And then when you kind of vote, I will calculate the total number of votes. If I do a spreadsheet afterwards, I usually track both the number of votes and actually the number of times an idea kind of came up. Because sometimes some people don't vote for some things because they feel it's absolutely obvious. So, Because I only, only kind of give you like three dots. So let's do that. You've got uh, 30 seconds or less to, to put three dots in any one of these buckets or on any one of the post-it notes. But really, we're voting for clusters because what I don't want is I don't want two votes here and two votes here. Really, it's four for that cluster. I prioritize Some people say, okay, well, you can vote like seven times or three. We pick three as usually a good number because what it does is it makes the math easy, right? When you only have two or three, you really have to try hard. In this case, we don't have that many blahs, but think if we had this whole wall now. Kind of to get going after this process is that I would really say that packaging and rating really had to do once, right? So anything else is like really not the auxiliary type of things, right? So if I had to, like I could pick 10 things, I could pick three things, it really depends on the scope of the project, right? Did everybody kind of understand how the grouping happened? So basically you had an interview and it's much different. Usability testing, we say, Wayne says it's bloody obvious what needs to be fixed, right? Like, man, it's like the elephant in the room kind of thing problem, right? This one, you can kind of see that. We spent a lot of time figuring out the questions and stuff like that. But the actual method that we come to the madness part, like method to the madness part, is actually also quite variable too. So much like the question, the mining of it is, is variable, right? So usability test, rating should never go from low to high first, right? Like everybody's like 100% agreement at that. Like, this one is going to be like, it could be like a religious or political debate. Somebody says, I've seen this happen too. Somebody says, no, no, no. Location is actually more important. I don't care if people didn't vote it. They, they feel strongly about it. At some point, we have to make some level of discernment and stuff like that. And that's why we do sort of the, 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 the voting here. So this part is democratic, but usually within design thinking, a lot of stuff is consensus. We're hoping to kind of come to the point where everybody says, man, that's bloody obvious. What I'm going to do for this now is I'm going to take this and now kind of just clear this off for a little bit and then what we'll do is we'll kind of talk a little bit about the composite sketch which I'll only do in the generic because it's really hard to do a composite sketch after we've interviewed one person because they should look a lot like her. <laughs> what I want to do is now we'll create a composite. <laughs> um, I might even say something like professional. Uh, we have a very small sample but the idea is like what we do is we create enough of these things, and then what we do is we kind of create a composite. Female. Let's start to nail it down. Age. Pick an age. 45. 45. If we wanted to, we could even say like an income bracket. Like, like obviously, we're making assumptions at that point. But that time is that 60, 60K, right? I would probably debate this married thing. I would put a couple. We don't want to infer something that's not there. So what happens is if we start changing the, the insights that we took from the kind of the composite sketch. It's not just a random throw in the dark. What we're trying to do is create a composite sketch. And then, so, use one of my friend's names. Her name is Sapna, and we'll say that, I'm gonna adjust this age, we'll call her 35 or something like that.